Pretty Woman is known for its everlasting charm, iconic performances, and unforgettable fashion moments. However, despite all the attention to detail, no film is immune to a few slip-ups. One wardrobe error in the movie went completely unnoticed by audiences and filmmakers alike, until years later when eagle-eyed fans finally spotted the mistake. It is one of those fun behind-the-scenes quirks that only adds to the film's success. Let's go into the wardrobe blunder that almost slipped through the cracks of this movie's history. Stay tuned. These days, it's common to see high-profile brands making appearances in movies. However, that was only sometimes the case, especially in the early 90s, just like in Pretty Woman. The producers wanted to showcase a luxury car and initially reached out to Ferrari and Porsche, assuming they'd be eager for the spotlight. Surprisingly, both brands declined, not wanting their cars associated with, let's say, less traditional encounters. That's where Nancy Gross and her Lotus stepped in. While it wasn't a Ferrari or Porsche, the Lotus added a distinctive touch to the film and ultimately fulfilled its purpose. Isn't it fun to catch little blunders in movies that give us a good laugh? A perfect example is Pretty Woman. In that scene, Vivian takes off Edward's tie and walks away momentarily. When she returns, his tie is magically neat and perfect again. And then, there's another funny slip-up where a croissant suddenly turns into a pancake in a flash between shots. Looks like someone missed keeping track of the details. While these goofs might not earn any awards, they keep us entertained, making us eager to spot more movie mistakes. Gary Marshall, the genius behind Pretty Woman, saw actor Hector Elizondo as his good luck charm. Hector took on the role of the hotel manager, which turned out to be an important part of the film. However, Disney Studios wasn't willing to meet Hector's requested payment for the role. But Gary wouldn't let that stand. Determined not to lose his lucky charm, Gary reached into his pocket to make sure Hector was paid what he deserved. After the movie became a major hit, Disney Studios had a change of heart and realized they had made a mistake, eventually paying back the extra money to Gary. Denzel Washington, Christopher Reeve, John Travolta and Daniel Day-Lewis competed for the highly coveted role in Pretty Woman. After an audition, the casting director selected and hand-picked Richard Gere for his undeniable charm and charisma. But there's an interesting backstory. Behind the scenes, director Gary Marshall had his eyes set on a completely different lead. He wanted the legendary Al Pacino for the role. However, Pacino was too busy with other projects and could not consider the part. Vivian made her grand entrance in the unforgettable opera scene of Pretty Woman looking stunning. But originally she wasn't supposed to wear red, it was meant to be black. Marilyn Vance, the brilliant costume designer, had a light bulb moment and knew that changing the color to red would make a bigger impact. She designed three breathtaking dresses for the scene but the red gown won. It became iconic, with Vivian's appearance in that red dress leaving everyone in awe. One of the more playful moments on set happened during the scene where Edward surprises Vivian with a sparkling diamond necklace. As Vivian reaches out to take the jewels, Edward snaps the case shut in a playful tease. Julia Roberts, caught completely by surprise, burst out laughing. Director Gary Marshall loved her genuine reaction so much that he decided to leave the moment in the film. What started as a little prank during filming became a memorable scene that added even more charm and magic to Pretty Woman. During an intimate scene between Julia Roberts and Richard Gere, it wasn't just the chemistry heating up, it was also a stubborn vein on Julia's forehead making an appearance. The vein became so noticeable that director Gary Marshall had to halt the filming. Determined to keep things on track, Marshall gave Julia a quick head massage until the vein finally settled down and let the scene continue smoothly. When Richard Gere was first offered the role of Edward Lewis in Pretty Woman, his reaction wasn't exactly enthusiastic. He quipped that you could put a goat in a fancy suit, which would do just as well in the role. Despite his initial reluctance, Gere owned the part, proving that even if you dress a goat in a suit, it's all about how you wear it. Director Gary Marshall's real-life frustration with hotel keycards became a bit of inspiration for Pretty Woman. 
He decided to have Richard Gere's character struggle with the same issue in the film, adding a relatable moment that anyone who's ever fumbled with a key card can appreciate. In a memorable scene from Pretty Woman, Vivian relaxes in front of the TV, watching an episode of I Love Lucy. Director Gary Marshall wanted to highlight that, despite the challenges in her life, Vivian still found joy in the small, everyday things. This moment added a layer of familiarity to her character, making her more relatable to viewers by showing that she, too, appreciated the same simple pleasures as anyone else. Directors have all sorts of methods to get actors into the right mood. For the scene where Vivian is lying on the floor watching I Love Lucy, director Gary Marshall needed just the right energy from Julia Roberts. His solution? He walked over and tickled her feet. The playful move worked, and the scene came out just as he had envisioned. Behind the scenes of the famous bubble bath scene in Pretty Woman, Julia Roberts was all set, immersed in bubbles, ready for her big moment. But Gary Marshall decided to have a little fun. He cleared the set, leaving Julia alone in the bath. To keep the bubbles looking their best, the crew added so much soap that it caused her hair dye to start running, turning her hair into a colorful mix. They had to scramble and adjust her hair color to save the day. The shopping scene in Pretty Woman is unforgettable, but the wardrobe wasn't all high-end fashion. Although the dress took center stage, another standout item was a plain red jacket that cost only $30. The costume team discovered it on a street corner and turned it into a key piece for the film. This proves that some of the most memorable fashion moments can come from the most surprising and inexpensive finds. The original plan was to film the grand opera scene at the San Francisco Opera House, but nature had other ideas. After an unexpected earthquake made the location unusable, the production team had to improvise. They quickly switched to a museum next to USC, saving the scene with a change that kept the film on schedule. In the 90s, long before social media filters and high-tech CGI effects, Photoshop was the tool for movie magic. Pretty Woman definitely took advantage of that. Richard Gere's hair in the movie poster looks jet black but it's a distinguished gray in the actual film. That's not all. The body of Julia Roberts on the poster? Well, that's not even her. It was Shelley Michelle, Julia's body double. The filmmakers seamlessly placed Julia's head on Shelley's body, pulling off the ultimate visual trickery. At the height of her fame as a teen star, Drew Barrymore was eager to play the role of Vivian in Pretty Woman. Her personal battles with addiction and the hardships she had faced early in life made her feel closely connected to the character. However, despite her talent and deep understanding of the role, Drew was ultimately not cast, as she was seen as too young to convincingly portray an experienced call girl. Alfred Hitchcock was famous for making surprise appearances in his films, and Gary Marshall, the director of Pretty Woman, wanted to follow suit. In one scene, Marshall enters the frame where Edward is lost and wandering. The person Edward bumps into? None other than Gary Marshall himself, sneaking in his cameo. The producers knew they had struck gold when they hired Gary Marshall to direct Pretty Woman. However, getting the story just right was equally crucial. That's where a skilled team of writers came into play. Robert Garland, Stephen Matafe, and Barbara Benedict collaborated to build the core of the film's plot. Once the foundation was set, additional writers were brought on board to fine-tune specific scenes, ensuring every moment was polished and perfectly aligned with the overall vision. Filming schedules can be grueling, and Julia Roberts experienced that firsthand. With hardly any time to rest between takes, she survived on just one avocado daily to keep up with the pace. As the days wore on, her body gave out, and she fainted on set. Without hesitation, director Gary Marshall opened up a can of tuna and fed her on the spot, showing just how committed he was to taking care of his lead actress. Filming the final fire escape scene was a real challenge for the crew, requiring nine takes to perfect. Every time they thought the scene was finished, something unexpected happened. Julia's shoes kept slipping off, or Richard Gere's suit would get wrinkled from climbing the stairs. 
To make things even more complicated, opera music started blaring from a nearby house, and to top it off, pigeons swooped in, adding to the already chaotic situation. Following the success of Pretty Woman, fans eagerly hoped for a sequel, but Richard Gere had his doubts. He wasn't sure they could capture the same magic that made the original so beloved. While spending time in the Tibetan mountains, Gere had a conversation with an elderly monk inside a cave. The monk asked him, when are you going to make Pretty Woman 2? That simple question planted a seed in Gare's mind, eventually leading to the creation of Runaway Bride. Though not a direct sequel, the film recaptured the romance, humor, and charm that made Pretty Woman such a classic. Pretty Woman became an instant global sensation, far more than just a movie. Fans from across the globe flocked to Beverly Hills, eager to immerse themselves in the world of Vivian and Edward. Beverly Hills welcomed the excitement by offering a Pretty Woman VIP tour along Rodeo Drive, where visitors could explore the exact locations seen in the film. But the experience didn't end there. Guests were treated like royalty, enjoying lavish spa treatments that made them feel like a million bucks. The real highlight? A dazzling fashion show at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel, featuring the iconic outfits from the movie. It was a dream come true for fans to step into the glamorous world of Pretty Woman. Beverly Wilshire Hotel made a brilliant move by allowing the Pretty Woman crew to film on their premises. While other venues demanded steep fees for their inclusion, Beverly Wilshire saw the long-term value and offered access to its luxurious interiors at a reasonable rate. This decision provided the setting for some of the film's most iconic moments and brought the hotel incredible publicity. As a result, it became a memorable piece of cinematic history, continuing to benefit from the lasting success of Pretty Woman. When the creators of Pretty Woman set out to make the movie, they wanted to capture the true essence of Los Angeles. Instead of building artificial sets, they chose real locations to showcase the city's energy. One of the standout spots was a retro diner known as Cicada in real life, but it was transformed into the elegant Voltaire in the movie. The nostalgic vibe of the place added authenticity to the film, making it feel more grounded. And Cicada didn't just star in Pretty Woman. It's been featured in other blockbuster films like Bruce Almighty and Indecent Proposal, solidifying its place as a go-to location for filmmakers. A standout scene in Pretty Woman is when Vivian bravely tries escargot at an upscale dinner, only to accidentally send a snail soaring across the room. Luckily, a quick-thinking waiter catches it with a smile. The moment was so iconic that it inspired a similar scene in another Gary Marshall film, The Princess Diaries, 2001. In a playful homage to Pretty Woman, Princess Mia has her own mishap with escargot, and the same waiter swoops in to catch it, repeating his familiar line. Some cinematic moments are simply too good not to revisit. Director Gary Marshall had a clever approach when developing Vivian's character. He chose to make her a Georgia native, just like Julia Roberts. This decision allowed Julia to bring her natural Southern accent and charm to the role, giving her performance a sense of authenticity that felt effortless. Without the need for dialect coaching or adapting to a different character persona, Julia could simply be herself, and that genuine quality enhanced her portrayal. Marshall's attention to detail and knack for highlighting his actor's strengths, especially with someone as talented as Julia, made the character of Vivian even more memorable. A legendary figure in cinema, Ralph Bellamy had a career that spanned more than six decades, leaving a profound mark on the industry. Pretty Woman holds a special place in his filmography, as it was the final movie he worked on before his passing in November 1991 at the age of 87. Throughout his illustrious career, Bellamy received nominations for prestigious honors such as the Academy Awards and Emmys. His work resonated with audiences around the world, and his performance in Pretty Woman serves as a bittersweet reminder of his incredible legacy. The film's theme song, too, stands as a tribute to the remarkable career of this iconic actor. In 1964, Roy Orbison's hit Pretty Woman was already making waves. 
but when the song was featured in the movie of the same name, it reached new heights of fame. The film's title being an exact match to the song didn't hurt either. It helped propel the tune to legendary status. The soundtrack from Pretty Woman flew off the shelves, selling over 3 million copies and achieving triple platinum status. And it wasn't just Orbison's track that stole the spotlight. Songs like It Must Have Been Love also dominated the Billboard charts for quite some time. Director Gary Marshall's goal was pretty clear for Pretty Woman. He wanted everything to look glamorous, especially the scene where Vivian wears a stunning red dress paired with breathtaking jewelry. Only the real deal would do for the necklace, so the filmmakers borrowed a piece valued at $250,000 encrusted with rubies and diamonds. The jeweler who loaned it out wasn't taking any chances, sending an armed guard to stay on set and protect the precious piece during filming. Fans of the iconic movie were in for a treat when, in 2017, news broke that Pretty Woman was being turned into a Broadway musical. By the fall of 2018, the show was on stage, much to the excitement of its loyal fan base. Screenwriter J.F. Lawton and director Gary Marshall collaborated to ensure the essence of the movie was preserved, crafting new songs while maintaining the magic that made the original film a hit. During the production of Pretty Woman, the crew found themselves pinching pennies due to a tight budget. As a result, they had to get creative with lighting for several scenes. Instead of using costly studio setups, they used streetlights to brighten nighttime shots. Director Gary Marshall joked that the lighting made the scenes shadier than intended. Despite the financial constraints, the movie was a massive hit for Disney Studios, proving that resourcefulness can pay off big time. In one of the early scenes of Pretty Woman, there was a funny little mistake in the dialogue. The original line had Robert saying, yeah, I'm going to grab a cab with my 20 bucks. However, a slip of the tongue turned cab into crab, and suddenly the line became, yeah, I'm going to grab a crab with my 20 bucks. Ever quick on his feet, Richard Gere played along, responding, yeah, there are a lot of crabs out there. Sometimes unplanned moments become unforgettable. Rodeo Drive, one of Beverly Hills' most luxurious spots, has strict guidelines when it comes to filming. The high-end boutiques that line the famous street don't want their regular shopping days interrupted, so all scenes for Pretty Woman had to be shot on Sundays. The strict filming rules helped maintain the street's posh reputation while giving the film the upscale vibe it needed. Julia Roberts and Richard Gere had already captured hearts in Pretty Woman long before they teamed up again for Runaway Bride. But the connections didn't end there. Julia, alongside Hank Azaria and Larry Hankin, brought their star power from the big screen to the popular TV show Friends. Fans of Pretty Woman were delighted to see these familiar faces making guest appearances on the sitcom, each actor adding their unique flair to their roles. The mix of romantic comedy stars in a sitcom setting created a fun, unexpected crossover that had fans talking, blending the charm of Hollywood's rom-coms with the wit and humor of Friends. Hank Azaria, known for his quirky role as Phoebe's charming boyfriend, Dr. David on Friends, debuted his speaking role in Pretty Woman. Long before he became a familiar face in the sitcom world, Hank appeared as a police officer in the opening scenes of Pretty Woman. Although his role was brief, it marked the start of a career that would eventually make him one of television's most beloved character actors. The magic of Pretty Woman has endured through the years, captivating audiences from all walks of life. Among its devoted fans is pop sensation Britney Spears, who openly shares her love for the movie. She's watched it countless times, drawn back by the enchanting love story and iconic moments. But Britney's not the only star hooked on this timeless classic. Miranda Cosgrove, famous for her role on iCarly, also holds Pretty Woman close to her heart, along with other beloved classics. The charm and romance of Pretty Woman never fade for both of them, keeping them returning for more. Robert's dog, who frequently hung out on set, had a funny habit. He wasn't exactly a fan of the romantic scenes between his owner and Richard Gere. The dog would express his displeasure by barking whenever they filmed these moments, leading to interruptions and multiple takes. 
This unexpected canine commentary brought an extra challenge to the shoot, but also some lighthearted humor, proving that even pets can have strong opinions about on-screen romance.